So have you ever thought about aerial rescue? Um, I haven't. Uh, I'm just used to seeing uh, helicopter rescue, a rope and somebody going down either with a basket or rescuing somebody. But I, anyway, I found an article from uh, 1943, I think it was. They talk about aerial rescue, uh, rescuing a person with an airplane and being picked up at 100 and over 150 miles an hour, or right around 150 mile, 50 miles an hour. So. Uh, that just seems kind of illogical to me, but I guess that's what they were looking into and testing. I can't even imagine. So I strap on a harness, or the, the subject would strap on a harness, lay on a lay on your back. Uh, you're attached to a rope that's uh, suspended between two poles, like a goalpost, and then an airplane. Oh, so you're looking up, right? So you're laying on your back, strapped into this harness with a rope attached to two poles, and you're laying up, looking at the sky while you see an airplane fly over your head with a tow rope or a tow hook, right? And picking you up and you get snatched up off the ground and suspended in the air by an airplane at 150 miles an hour. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not sure I would do that, but uh, anyway, Tesla is very fascinating. Kind of reminds me of the, the 90s um, to banner towing. Uh, they did some banner towing at the air park and I remember seeing that and that was Pretty interesting. So pretty much it's a banner towing outfit or setup. Uh, other than a banner on the ground, you're on the ground. So uh, I don't know. Interesting story. So uh, Hitchhiking to the Heaven uh, or Hitchhiking to Heaven is the name of the story. Uh, 1943 I think it was. So uh, uh, fascinating story. Uh, hope you like it. Uh, I'm Derwickio and enjoy the story. Have you ever wondered how aviation engineers tackled the problem of rescuing stranded individuals in remote or perilous locations? Back in the early 1940s, the Army Air Forces developed an ingenious aerial pickup device that could pluck humans off the ground and into a moving airplane traveling at speeds of up to 150 miles per hour. This pioneering system paved the way for modern advancements such as drone-based rescue operations and autonomous retrieval methods which now use sophisticated sensors, GPS technology, and AI to achieve similar goals with even greater precision and safety. Dubbed the Heavenly Hitchhikers, this innovation revolutionized the possibilities of aerial rescue. The concept began with cargo containers, gradually progressing to live subjects like sheep and ultimately humans. Engineers at Wright Field, part of the Air Technical Service Command, started experimenting in July 1943. The first human trial occurred on September 5, 1943, when Lieutenant Alexis Doster was lifted aloft in a Stinson SR-10 monoplane. Despite its success, further human tests were delayed after Doster's untimely death in Egypt from infantile paralysis. Testing resumed over a year later with brave participants like Staff Sergeant Harry C. Conway and Captain John Peter LeWarner. These individuals, along with a few others, formed an elite group of aerial pioneers. So how did this groundbreaking system work? Engineers designed a setup where a nylon rope loop was stretched between two light poles resembling goalposts. The subject reclined on the ground, strapped into a harness connected to the loop. Modern advancements in wearable technology and lightweight materials could further refine this design, enhancing comfort and safety while maintaining durability during high stress rescues. As the plane approached, its trailing hook engaged the loop, initiating the ascent. Inside the aircraft, a winch operator smoothly reeled in the subject, who planed upward like a glider. In contemporary applications, automated systems, or AI, could potentially handle the winch operation using advanced algorithms and sensors to ensure precision and further reduce the risk of human error during the process. The entire process, from ground to cabin, took just 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Lieutenant Norman S. Benedict who piloted many of these missions, remarked, The first time I picked up a human, it scared me half to death. I thought something had gone wrong because I didn't receive the same jolts. Despite the high speeds involved, participants reported a surprisingly gentle experience. Engineers fine-tuned the braking system to minimize G-forces, ensuring the peak acceleration lasted only a second or two. Remarkably, the jolt of a human aerial pickup was less than the sensation of jumping off a chair stiff-legged. Test pilots noted that picking up a human felt notably different than lifting cargo or a sheep. The human body's flexibility made the pickup feel soft as a marshmallow. This remarkable technology wasn't just a technological marvel, it had practical and tactical implications. 
today, similar systems could integrate with modern search and rescue operations, utilizing satellite tracking for precise location identification and advanced communication networks to coordinate rescues in real time. Such advancements would make these operations faster, safer, and more effective in even the most challenging environments. It could rescue individuals from areas inaccessible to seaplanes or helicopters, such as ice flows or rough seas. In fact, a British version of the system was reportedly used to retrieve a secret agent from enemy territory. The only sensation is a smooth whir of the air around you and then the ground disappears underneath, describes Lieutenant Doster after his ascent. If I hadn't heard the wind, I would hardly have known I was moving. The program's success hinged on both innovation and bravery. Engineers faced challenges ranging from uncooperative sheep to intricate refinements in rope composition. At one point, the team considered using Barbette, a chimpanzee from the Aero Medical Laboratory, as a test subject. However, the pilot, Captain Norman Rintal, joked, if you use Barbette, you better teach her to fly the plane too, because when she comes in one side, I'm going out the other. Meanwhile, human participants approached their roles with humor and aplomb. Corporal Konstantin Skyakidis, one of the test subjects, confidently demonstrated the proper pickup position while joking with the crew. During his ascent, he even unsnapped his leg straps and waved energetically to the plane crew as he was reeled in. Sergeant Conway, after completing his ascent, slid into the plane with a grin and quipped, Boy, that's jerkin' a jerk. Though initially limited to lightweight aircraft like the Stinson Reliant or the Nordwin Norseman, experiments aimed to adapt the system for high-speed combat planes. Perils can be drawn to today's high-speed rescue operations using supersonic jets or even potential space rescue technology where rapid deployment and retrieval in extreme conditions continue to evolve. The vision of adapting this system for combat planes overshadowed the technological leaps we now see in advanced aerospace applications. By the end of the program, engineers had pushed pickup speeds to over 158 miles per hour, demonstrating the durability of both the equipment and the human body. Aeromedical experiments showed that for brief periods, the human body could withstand up to 12 Gs without ill effects, and pickup at these speeds rarely exceeded 10 Gs, a threshold too brief to cause blackouts. Hitchhiking to Heaven encapsulates a blend of daring innovation and audacious spirit. It's a story of how necessity, creativity, and courage converged to reshape what was possible in aviation rescue. Whether for stranded flyers or covert missions, this aerial pickup system stands as a testament to human ingenuity and the drive to conquer the skies. All right, so what'd you think of that? Um, fascinating, right? But uh, to be honest, let's be honest, right? I don't think I would do it. I'm not sure you would either. Uh, and I'm glad technology has evolved enough or advanced enough that uh, they're not doing it that way anymore. But uh, fascinating, right? Of how, they, how they're how they doing tests and uh, how it all progressed. So anyway, uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.